CIA warned Germany weeks ago about potential attacks on Nord Stream. Very weird. CIA is saying, hey, we have a feeling someone's going to attack. Mm -hmm. It's a little weird for me there that you're like a Houdini type of situation. So uh, 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 not Houdini, Nostradamus type of situation. So next one, European official says sabotage likely cause of suspicious Nord Stream leaks. So that's a post-millennial. Uh, uh, Danish Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen noted that while it is too early to conclude whether the incidents were act of sabotage, there are three leaks and therefore it is difficult to imagine that it could be accidental. Polish Prime Minister Matuas uh, Morowiecki said, we don't know all the details of what happened, but we can clearly see that it's an act of sabotage. To make a, he, He's not even saying maybe. He's saying we can clearly uh, see that it's an act of sabotage related to the next step of escalation of the situation in Ukraine. And last but not least, the same story again comes with some of the commentary uh, where the reporter said, but will you, uh, uh, when Joe Biden was asked February 7th, I'll read this on what happened between Joe Biden when his question was asked, it's pretty intense. President Joe Biden on February 7th promised to prevent Nord Stream 2 from begin becoming operational if Russia invaded Ukraine. He said, if Russia invades, then there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We will bring an end to it. Reporter asked, but how will you do that exactly? Since the project is in Germany's control, Biden, I promise you we will be able to do that. That's seven months ago. So based on what you've been following this story with and where you're at, what are your thoughts on what the hell is going on with Nord Stream 1 and 2? Who's behind it? The, the, one of the earliest victims in times of tension is the, is the difference between what I think and what I know. And one of the things I learned at the agency is, man, be very careful about crossing that line. I think the White House has been more cautious than some of the people in Europe who spoke. I think Russia did this. Basically, because you're looking at multilateral warfare. We define warfare in terms of kinetic. I put bombs on something. I put artillery on something. Clearly, going into the winter with Europe that's dependent on, on gas from Russia, it, you would say on the surface, why would Russia want to sabotage pipelines where they're making money? They want to Bingo. tell Europe. This is very simple. They want to tell Europe when it gets cold uh, and you need to heat homes, careful. We're your, we're your source, and if Nord Stream 2 comes on— we're going to continue to be your source, and this is what can happen if you guys don't um, sort of continue to import and also don't back off on Ukraine. So I think Russia did it, but, you know, that's what I think. That's not what I know. I would want to have basic questions, for example, technical questions. When do we get overseas drones so we can see how these things were sabotaged? Can engineers tell me what the causes of those sabotage might have been? As a non-expert, I'm not uh, my my degrees in English, English literature. I want to know what exactly happened and whether that could be explained by natural means or whether it it an engineer can guarantee to me that that's an external um that's an external event that was manipulated by a human being. So I, I think Russia did it. I think the reasons are pretty basic. I think Biden overpromised. I'd close by saying this is where foreign policy is interesting. One of the things that fascinated me in three dimensional, for example, there's got to be a lot of conversations, and these include people like the Saudis, a lot of conversations about energy security in Europe going on 10 years. You know, that's where Anthony, Anthony Blinken's involved. Here's a really interesting conversation I, I would have liked to participate in if I were still in. Let's anticipate that, that Putin will stay aggressive over the course of time. What are we learning about vulnerabilities of Russian forces in Ukraine? How do we push NATO without additional American backing to say we want to forward deploy in places like the Balkans and Poland to take advantage of those Russian <laughs> vulnerabilities if Russia does. There's a lot of planning going on here, and I think Nord, the, the 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 gas pipeline is the part of it. Be, is part of it because you are guaranteeing that Russians or that the Europeans realize they're under threat. So now is the time to go in and talk to them and say, we better prepare for the next threat. And mm. we don't know if that's Balkans. We don't know if it's Poland, but be careful. A uh, Baltics, not Balkans. Quick follow up. By the way, I completely appreciate what you say about what you think versus what you know. I think that's something we could all kind of take away from this episode is like, you might think something, but you don't know for uh, sure. Saddam WMD. Exactly. I mean, Al-Qaeda America. Oh I've my been God. there too many times. I mean, it's 
such a uh, powerful comment right there. Uh, just quick question. What are the chances that the U.S. actually did this? You know, what is that number? Is it 1%? Is it 5%? What is that? Zero. Zero. You don't think they did uh, but, this? But again, let, let me be for people who say, you know, you're just, just, you're just supporting the government. If you do that, you're going to have to have an executive order. That executive order is going to have to go through a chain of command. You're going to have to not have a number of people who are involved in the actual sabotage operation. So going mm -hmm. to my college stats class, yeah. what's the likelihood that not one of them has or will ever speak? That's, you, you, if you're doing the multiplication numbers, that's just not possible. Got I it. never saw a secret that didn't get out. Nothing we did that I can remember. Uh, I'm sure there's some minor things, but the major operations we ran, I can't think of any that didn't get out. Fair enough. And then regarding Russia, I don't not I'm not the Nord Stream guy, but I, I do understand supply and demand and imports, exports. If they're making money from Europe, now they're not going to be able to make money because these these uh, uh, Nord Stream won't be working. Europe's still going to need to import energy and oil from other countries. Now they're going to go to Saudi or they're going to go to yeah. even America or they're going to go to Iran or they're going to go to Venezuela. Whoever's you know, pumping out oil, doesn't that just kind of shoot themselves in the foot if you're Russia? But I, I think you, if this is where the, the job I used to have, which is basically uh, understanding the world through the eyes of an adversary to avoid that the analytic phrase is to avoid mirror imaging. Don't think the opponent sees the world the way you do, mm. or the adversary, or even the person you're just negotiating with. My, what I think, not what I know, but what I think is that, and, and Putin has almost as much as said this, is that his priority is the restoration of the Russian Empire. I mean, he talks about the decline of the Soviet Union and the end of the Soviet Union is one of the biggest tragedies of, of the 20th century. So if your priority is geopolitical and let's restore sort of a czarist state mm -hmm. and, and the, the cost is economic pain for a few years, I can see him prioritizing, I want to restore basically the empire. And if it costs us, you know, a couple of difficult years, a, a mm. difficult decade, I have a bigger vision that goes, it's like the Al-Qaeda guys used to tell me, I know this sounds like a strange parallel, but I'll never, never forget it. They used to look at us in interrogations and one of them said once, you know, you think of life in terms of years. This, the, the caliphate may not happen in my lifetime. Maybe not my kids, but it might happen in my grandchildren's lifetime. Mm. Americans don't think like that. Right. But some of our adversaries do. We have a YOLO mentality here. They've got a legacy yeah. mentality. Well, yeah. So so go ahead. Partly because life is so good here. Pat, what was the, the quote that you've referenced before? Uh, you guys may have all the watches, but we have all the time, I believe. Yeah, is that I what they that. said about it? Yeah. 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 The Taliban, I believe. So, said that. so okay, so let's, let's process this on, on what we're saying, uh, that Russia is behind this, and some are saying U.S. is behind this. It's really the two main parties that people are saying is behind this mm -hmm. is Russia or U.S. Okay. Right. He said zero U.S., but yeah. go, go so ahead. So clearly we know based on what we 100% know, not what we're Think. speculating, yeah. what we 100% know to take your argument, we know that the, the person in charge, his name is Joe Biden, said if Russia invades, then there will be no longer a North Stream 2. We will bring it to an end. So the only thing we know for a fact is that only one person in the world out of 7.7 .7 billion people only said this, Putin didn't say this. Only one person said it, and it's the leader of the free world. The president of the United States said this. Okay, can we find that? And quote? then, and then, you know, not just the quote, the video. Yeah, so I'm saying you can find a quote. Yeah. Okay. And then the reporter says, "But how will you do that exactly? Since the project is in Germany's control, Biden. This is what we know, not what we think. I promise you, we will be able to do that. Okay. So now let me go to the other part. So for me." Um, if you can find this clip somewhere, so yeah, you can it was show on it. February seventh, twenty two. It's easy to find. It's not hard. It's all over the place. Here's the other part. Uh, again, I'm going based on what we know, not what we think, and not what I'd like to. If this is the one, just play it so the audience can see it, because it's not just a. It's exactly what I'm. The border of Ukraine, again. Then uh, there will be. Uh, we there will no, be no no go, go back go back go back go back from the beginning so they can hear the whole if, thing. Go ahead. Uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means. Tanks or troops crossing the uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again. Then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer a Nord Stream two. He said we, this. We will bring February. It into okay. This is how will you, listen. How will you do that? The lady's confused. Exactly. Since the project and control of the project is within Germany's exactly. control. Exactly. We will. Uh, I promise you we'll be able to do it. Okay, so, so Will you commit today right to there. turning off and pulling the plug on Nord Stream 2? 
You didn't mention it. You haven't mentioned it. You can pause it. As I Somebody said. watches it, you can watch. Okay, so so this we know. So the, the people that may debate the argument that it's really Russia are going to say, where's your proof? Because this is proof. And your leader said this. This is a threat. And we did it. Uh, we did invade Ukraine. So guess what? If the person that said they're going to do it, it's him. So we can't say 0%. That's my opinion on that. We can't say 0%. So now let me go to the other part. On uh, Nord Stream 2 pipeline, we have to look at who owns most of it, right? If I own a company and I have leverage over you, and if I hurt the company that I'm the majority owner of, I'm an idiot. I'm a qualified idiot. I'm not a strategist. I'm not a Sun Tzu guy. I'm not a, 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 a you know one of the greatest generals of all time. I'm a qualified moron if I hurt the company that I have control over and I lose leverage, specifically this kind of leverage. We're not even talking about like company free enterprise capitalism. This is like leverage at the highest level of leverage where you get to control the world, you know, Europe specifically where their winter is coming. So let's see who owns the majority of Nord Stream pipeline. If you can kind of show the shareholders here and zoom in, go a little bit closer, 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 a little bit more closer. So 51% is owned by Gazprom. So let's see who is Gazprom. They are the largest supplier of natural gas in the world, accounting for approximately 15% of world's gas production. It was established as a joint stock company in 1993 and partly owned by the Russian state, over 50%. Interesting. Core activities include exploration, production, transportation, blah, 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 blah. You can read the rest of it if you want to do it. Number two is another company called Wintershall D, 15.5%. Now, this company, with the merger of Wintershall Holding, AG, and DEA, Deutsch, German, Erdol AG, two successful companies with a long tradition have formed Europe's leading independent natural gas and oil company. Huh. Okay, cool. Let's look at the next one. The third company is Eon, Aon, Eon, PEG Infrastructure AG. This is an international investor-owned energy company which focused on energy networks and customer solutions as one of Europe's largest energy companies. But it's not really one place. It's all over the place. Fine. Ger- Go to German the next company. One. It's a German company. Next one. NV. Uh, Netherland uh, uh, Gasuni, okay, 9%. So as I, I can keep going on and go to the next one, NG by people of, you know, this next one is uh, based out of, uh, you can see which one is this one as well. Anyways, but the point is 51% is Russia. So if you <laughs> cause this and you're Russia, you will go down in the history books as the biggest idiot of all time for giving up the leverage that you have during a time like this. So if a lawyer wanted to make a case simply to a better, because he's going to go in Las Vegas and bet over a 30-year bet, because eventually CIA is going to leak this in a movie and we're going to watch an Argo in 2052, <laughs> that's going to say Biden was really behind this and we're going to say, no shit, and I'm 74 years old. Like, Did you see that? I'll be dead, so it's, you, it's fine. <laughs> so at this pace, you're probably going to be alive because we're living a long time today. But, but, but the point is, this is pretty creepy for the people that are, there, that are saying U.S. could have done it because there is documentation and proof that U.S. could be behind this. What do you say to those crazy conspiracy theorists? I'd give them a pretty simple answer, which is let's go back to fact. Right now we're making judgments based on no access or very little access to the places where there's damage. We said it's either Russia or or uh, the United States. I'm not an engineer, but I, you took one off the table that I would not take off the table because it's not a fact. People say there's no way this is this is some kind of industrial accident. I'm like, how can you tell me that if you haven't had access to the places where the event happened? So first of all, it, getting back to the earlier point, the president should never have said that because we don't own this. The Americans like to say we can snap our fingers and do stuff. The Europeans and the Russians own this. But he did say it, though. He did. It's a lot of things he shouldn't say. He thought a person was alive two days ago. He can't deliver on this. But my point is, I would say, and this is is why time uh, sort of uh, attention spans in America are difficult, the right answer is, like the right answer on the Russian investigation, let's look at some facts. And when we gather those facts, including undersea access to the locations where this happened, we will draw conclusions about what happened and start reacting to it. But saying we're going to do X, Y, Z based on no no definitive answer about what happened, I, I don't get this. I mean, I get it politically. You have to give the American people an answer. But analytically, you don't have a fact. So you just jumped from what I think to what I know. And you're going to base policy on that. I, I don't. Not me. I'm an analyst. I wouldn't do that. Well, I'm just analyzing what my president said. Yeah, it's my so, president. So going back, I, I have to follow my president because my president, publicly with a microphone in front of him, he's the guy that's my president. He's your, he's our president, right? He said, if they invade Ukraine, 
we will shut it down. The lady said, how exactly when you don't have control over it? He says, trust me, well, we he's, will. He's, he's wrong. No, he, he doesn't matter whether he's right or wrong. He said it, though. That's a fact. Yes, he, it does matter. That's a fact. Because it does matter yeah. whether he's right or wrong because he can't do this. The right answer is the difficult answer. That is, you go to the Europeans and you go to the, to the, to the to non-Russians who have yeah. pieces not only of, yeah. of the pipeline but also have to deal with heat during the winter and say, we have to have a long-term solution, which is alternate access, and we have to have a short-term solution, which is what do you want to do in November? And if we think we can tell them your your people are going to be cold, we don't give a shit because the president said we're going to shut it down. American arrogance at play. The first question is to the Europeans who all who probably also have better ideas than we do because they have to deal with this every day. Mm -hmm. They know what political opinion is. They know what the attitudes of populations who have to be cold is. Yeah. What do you think we should do? And let's start maybe taking somebody else's lead once in so a while. A little humility. Let's let's go through some case study. Okay, Pearl Harbor happens. FDR gets up and says, they're going to pay a price for this. Well, he dies. The next leader comes in, Truman, nuke. Yeah. Okay, boom. Catastrophic. What happens over there, right? Hiroshima. Uh, Reagan, Jimmy Carter. Iran didn't fear Jimmy Carter at all. They saw him as a weak yeah. man. They didn't see him as a leader. The day Reagan gets elected, seconds later, they release prisoners of war because they believed his threat. And Khomeini said, hey, guys, let's kind of not mess with this guy. I know he's an actor, but I don't think he's acting right. Now let's let's release these guys. By the way, so far it is two Democrats, one Republican. Yeah. This is not uh, – George Bush, hey, 9-11. I don't want to do the conspiracy stuff with that part, but he comes up. Hey, here's what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, Trump, hey, North Korea, I dare you. See what we do. Okay. Yeah. So you have to believe the threat when a president says a threat – whether we like it or not, whether he's your president or not, whether you voted for him or not, he made a threat to Russia publicly. If you invade Ukraine, yeah. here's what we're doing. So now, when you make a threat, you have one of two choices. And we've all been in this position before. We're at a bar. We, guy, we have one too many drinks. And we tell the guy, if I, I'm going to kick your ass. Say something. And the guy says it again like, shit, I either have to kick his ass or I have to walk away. And it sucks when you're in that position. Well, when Biden says it to 7.7 .7 billion people, he has to follow through with his threat. So you have to respect the fact that if he is behind this, at least your president, our president, followed through on his threat. So respect to him for following through on his threat. So now, let's just say it is him. Let's play the game for shits and giggles because it's entertaining and we're having fun with it. I'm going to kick your ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> Say something, Philip. Say something. <laughs> so let's just say he is following through on his threat. Number one, you know who respects it? The fact that he's following through on his threats in a dark way. Putin respects the fact that he followed. Oh, I would agree with that. If, if he the did. Yes, yeah, Putin's I agree with sitting there behind closed doors saying, this mother, yeah. he's probably in his own Russian way, you know, he'll say something like that. Okay. So now, but Putin has also made some threats. Okay. Putin's also said, we will use nuclear if you keep supporting Ukraine. Okay, when I saw this happen a couple days ago, I sat there and we were talking about the last podcast, what's the chance of a nuclear war taking place? And I'm like, dude, it's less than 5%, 5 to 10%, less than yeah, 5%. Yeah. <sighs> this, this uh, you know what I mean? This, this, uh, this kind of escalated some shit a little bit the last 48 hours when, 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 when this happened. This is not a joke. To the average person, they're like, oh, look at that. Bubbles in the ocean. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's, it's a real entertainment. Why, why is oil creating bubbles? I'd be curious to know if I swim there. Would it feel good? The average person who's not following all of this stuff is like, ah, it's just bubbles in the middle of the ocean. No, this is very, very political, very, very strategic, very, very intentional. And uh, I think the, chest, the next move is on a guy named Vladimir. And uh, I think that guy knows how to play chess, and I'm really curious what his next move's going to be. I, yeah, we had one move, this, another move this week beyond the pipeline, and that is going through the formal process of, of taking over pieces of Ukraine, which is mm -hmm. him saying, you're never coming in again. And we have a right to do this because this is Russian territory. I, I th Yeah, that was breaking news. He annexed four regions yes, of Ukraine. Yes, correct? yes. Um, so I, I think... There's a couple of pieces of this. The first, we already know the answer, which is the White House is toe to line between saying, 
how do I say this politely? I think a lot of American people would say, I don't want kids, American kids to die in Ukraine, mm -hmm. but I also don't want this to be extended across Europe. We do have, I think there is some residual sense that, you know, we have a lot in common with Europe based on what happened after, during and after World War II, but we've got to make it painful without making it cost American lives. And I think that line has been towed, I think pretty effectively over the past few months. If you have, had said this was the result earlier this year in terms of pain to Putin, you'd say, that's better than I would have I would have banked on in terms of how much pain Putin feels. I raise that because I think, to, to be brutal, I think the real question isn't Ukraine. The real question is whether the pain pill is sufficient for Putin to be saying, I can't keep doing this elsewhere in Europe. Hmm. And that's where I think American policy has made some sense. Make it really, really, really hurt. But behind closed doors, I wouldn't say this is the National Security Council without the president. But what I'm thinking is, I, I may be in for a dime. I am not in for a dollar. Well, I am not in for a dollar. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.